This is a video for people who want to get into mobile development like iOS apps, but have absolutely no coding experience or are semi-technical and have a little bit of coding experience. I'm making this video to answer the question, how do I get started with mobile development if I have zero coding experience? I have been asked this question so many times and for a while my answer has been, don't do mobile development because it is very challenging and there have not been good platforms like Lovable and V0, which in my opinion are safe AI coding platforms to build websites. Nothing like that exists for mobile development. So I've been telling beginners to avoid it altogether and just build on the web or telling them to pick up something like Cloud Code and Cursor, but to be aware that there is a pretty steep learning curve. And now I finally have a much better recommendation. I'll get right to the point. It's to use a platform called Anything. Go as far as you can with this platform, push it to the limit, and then and if you need to go further, look into things like Cursor and Cloud Code. The bulk of this video is gonna be me talking about why I recommend this platform, and I'll show you what I was able to build with it over the weekend so you can see what's possible. I actually made this app over the weekend and I wrote zero lines of code. I didn't even look at any code. And it has a pretty good design, some custom interactions and animation, and even AI capabilities like the ability to use vision to extract the food and get the nutrition and calorie information with AI. We'll talk about my roadmap for beginners who wanna get into mobile development, and more importantly, who wanna get good at mobile development. Before we go into this further, I do want to address that Anything is actually sponsoring and partnering with me on this video. I want to be upfront with you guys and give you guys more context because I know that some bias does come with taking on a sponsorship, especially when you're recommending a product like this. First, I do not take my recommendation here lightly. Almost every major AI building platform has reached out to me at some point in the past and I have not worked with any of them. In fact, the Anything team actually did reach out to me a few months ago and I rejected them because I felt like the product was not up to the standards where I would actually recommend it to you guys. But I did sit down with them and I gave them a ton of feedback on what needed to change for me to actually recommend it. And a few months later, they reached out and said, hey, we actually took your recommendation seriously we think that we built something that actually meets your standard. I was very skeptical, but after trying it, I think that they're actually onto something here. Even if they weren't sponsoring this video, this is my actual recommendation for people who wanna get into it. I'm even getting my mom to build a mobile application here, so that's how serious I am about this. But they are sponsoring, and I actually asked them if they could give an exclusive offer for the channel, and they graciously agreed. There is a code in the description, and if you use it, you get 50% off of one month of their 20K plan, or $10 off of any plan or credit purchase. They did not have to do that, I'm the one that asked them to do it, so so definitely use that if you're interested in trying them out. I just wanted to clarify that with you guys, but let's get into what this platform is. It's basically an AI builder. If you're familiar with things like Lovable and B0 for building websites, it's very similar to this, but it is very good at building mobile applications. You can do web development on this platform, but I've been exclusively testing it for mobile development and I've been very impressed with the results. I built this food tracking app over the weekend just to see how far I could push this platform and I wanted to show you guys a couple things. So the first is that I was able to implement a very custom design. This is exactly how I would have designed it if I was building this from scratch with Swift UI. Also a benefit of using anything is that technically since it's React Native, you could actually deploy this to Android if you wanted to. I was only focusing on iOS, so I'm only speaking about my experience building an iOS app on this platform. But as you can see for my app, I was able to get a lot of custom design here. There are also some really cool custom interactions I was able to build. So for example, a lot of the modals, like this one when you click one of the food items, you'll see this sheet pop up. That is completely custom. This is not a normal React Native modal. I actually built this from scratch in this platform just using plain English, but this animation of it coming up the way it does was something that I specified. All I had to do was tell it, I want this modal to appear. Can you make it bounce slightly and then make it so when it comes up, I wanna be able to tap below and then I need it to animate and slide down. Same thing if you go to this tab where you can chat with this AI nutritionist that I built. If you look closely, the head illustration of Luna is actually bobbing up and down slowly, completely custom interaction. I told it, can you actually have it animate slowly up and down? And then it just handles all of this. So it actually can handle custom interactions, which did surprise me. So another thing I wanted to point out was I did add AI features to this app. So something I added was the ability to take pictures of food. It's going to process the image using AI. I believe it's using the GPT Vision API. And then it uses AI to identify the food and then come up with the nutrition info and then this little recommendation that you see here. And it's really cool because I built this with just a few prompts and again, zero coding. And then same thing here, I built this feature where you can actually type in the food manually. So if 
I type Chipotle bowl, it's actually going to run a Google search. So being able to do a Google search is a module that anything already has. So it's going to do the Google search. It's going to pull Google images and get the first image that it finds. And then it's going to use AI to get the nutrition info and then make that recommendation again. A lot of this stuff would have taken me a few hours to implement correctly, but I was able to do all of this in minutes. And then obviously there's this chat feature that I built. So I built this AI chat nutritionist. Let me show you guys how easy it is to actually tweak the AI with this platform. Let's say I'm not happy with how it's responding. Like it's kind of verbose. It's not that great. All I have to do is tell it, hey, can you actually make it so that for the chat, when it responds, I want it to respond more like a friend and a lot more concise. Can you make that change? So now when I do this, I believe what's going on is it's actually gonna go modify the prompt and then it's going to just make that change for me. But I love that for beginners, you might not know what a system prompt is. Like how do you make the AI sound a specific way? And they just completely take care of this for you. So these were a couple of features that I added and I did this in a weekend. I literally have it here on my phone right now on test flight. This is such a good way for beginners to get started. So now the reason I'm recommending beginners start with this and not jump into something like Claude Coder Cursor off the bat is there is a very high learning curve when you learn something like Claude Code and Cursor. It's not just about using Claude Code. You do have to kind of understand how things like databases and authentication and deploying all of that stuff works to be able to do mobile development. This is not at all impossible for beginners to do. And there's a lot of people who have watched my videos who have successfully done it. But I've gotten a lot of comments from people saying that that learning curve was still too high. And if there was another way that they can get into mobile development. So I think starting with a platform like anything is a really good idea because you don't have to think about the code at all. You don't have to think about databases, authentication, deploying, none of that. And the reason I recommend going down this route for beginners is you're going to learn the fundamentals of building products with AI, even if you use a platform like this. And that's how to get really good at prompting an AI so that you get the most out of it and how to break down problems and features into smaller, more manageable pieces. You'll also pick up certain skills like debugging because then when the AI inevitably does something wrong, you'll learn how to correctly prompt and debug with AI. Depending how far you go, you might learn some basics on authentication and even databases. This is a very good way for beginners to learn what I believe are the core concepts of mobile development in a very safe, controlled environment. And once you hit the limits of what a platform like anything can do, then if you transition to something like Claude Code, that learning curve of learning Claude Code is gonna be way lower. So that's why I'm recommending starting with a platform like this. So let's hop into why this platform specifically, because there are four main reasons. The first is that its design sense is very good compared to all the other AI building apps that I've used before. There's actually a piece of feedback that I gave the team a couple months ago when I first evaluated the product. It just was not good at design. I think they took that personally. And now the designs are the best I've seen when it comes to mobile apps from an AI builder. Let me actually just show you what this looks like. So when you go to anything, I'm just gonna spin up a blank project and it literally looks kind of just like ChatGPT. And you can just start prompting it and say something like, can you build an app where I can scan food and it will use AI to track the calories for me? I'm gonna hit accept and then it's just gonna start building. Okay, so after a few minutes, it's done and check out the initial design here. It looks so much better than the typical AI generated mobile apps that you see. So its design sense is one of the major reasons I think beginners should use this platform because I know how discouraging it is to use something like Claude Coder Cursor and then when you build the app on your phone, it looks horrible. You just feel more motivated and happy when you see good design. And so it does this right off the bat even if you have no design skills whatsoever, which I think is very important for beginners who are just getting started. So the next reason I recommend this platform is its reliability and its consistent ability to follow instructions. It is actually on another level. I've spent about $140 on this platform to build the app that I'm gonna show you guys. Like I've sent hundreds of messages at this point, so I've really been using this thing. Its ability to follow instructions, especially a long string of instructions, has been incredible to see. Even compared to something like Claude Code, which when I give it 10 things, some Sometimes it drops the ball on one or two things. This thing is just really good at following instructions. Something I'm also looking for is the error rate. How many times do I have to ask the AI to debug something? Because a lot of the times when you're using platforms like this, you do spend a lot of times just telling it, it's not building, it's making a mistake, it's not working. And this platform has one of the lowest error rates that I've seen. There were only two instances out of the hundreds of messages that I've sent and all the features that I built where I've had to send more than five messages to debug an error. The third reason is it makes very tricky things for mobile development way simpler. One example is if you want to integrate AI into your mobile app, it is actually not that straightforward.
forward. A really big problem I see when people are building mobile applications and they have some AI features is they usually do it in a very insecure way. For some reason, Claude Code and Cursor always default to putting the AI code in the front end. And they don't spin up a separate backend to run this stuff, which is what you probably should be doing in most cases. There's just a bunch of complicated stuff you have to do to make sure that AI is implemented in a correct and a secure way. But when you use a platform like anything, they handle all of that for you. So I can actually just tell it, can you add an AI chat where I can chat back and forth with it like a nutritionist? Check this out, it works. I didn't have to think about spinning up a separate backend. Is it secure? Even just getting an API key to use the AI, I didn't have to think about any of that. And they have this unified billing system. So any AI usage that is happening in your app can actually just consume the credits that you bought with them, which I believe is incredibly smart for beginners because signing up for Open Router or the Anthropic console and then integrating the AI is pretty challenging for beginners who have no coding experience. And they have some complex modules built out for some commonly requested features. Check this out. Even integrating with something like the Google Search API or doing web scraping, dictation, working with these different models. They have all of these pre-built modules for a lot of these complex integrations. And I think being able to handle a lot of this complexity for you is massive for beginners so they don't get overwhelmed. On that note, the fourth thing is deployment and infrastructure. When you're coding and using Claude Codes, something that trips up beginners, and I'm always here is, what am I supposed to do with the database? How do I deploy this thing? If you've ever deployed an iOS app, you know that it is a very painful process. Just dealing with building and bundling your application, getting the certificate, submitting it to the app store and going through all of these steps is a huge hassle. They have one of the most unique experiences that I've seen when it comes to deploying an app to test flight in the app store. You literally press a button, log in with your Apple developer account, then it just handles all the building and bundling and it just sends it directly to test flight. And so I actually got this app on my phone in test flight in under 30 minutes. And 29 of those minutes were because it was just building and bundling it in the background. As someone who has deployed a ton of apps on the app store, I did not expect it to be this frictionless. Oh, and something I forgot to bring up with testing is since it's using React Native under the hood and Expo specifically, they'll actually give you a QR code you can scan and you can immediately start testing the app on your device, which is incredible because getting the app physically on your phone has usually been a big problem for beginners because Xcode is just a nightmare to deal with. Deploying the infrastructure, like deploying the backend and all of this AI stuff, and then deploying to the app store, these are really complex things for beginners and they handle a lot of this so that you can just focus on building. Okay, so who is this platform for? The first group is complete beginners or semi-technical builders. This is people who have no coding experience whatsoever or just a little bit of coding experience. Maybe you followed a tutorial and you tried to build something in the past, but you got stuck on the infrastructure. This platform lets you leverage whatever knowledge you have and then handles all the complex parts for you. Second is developers who want to rapidly prototype things. Prototype in terms of getting something really quick that's usable in your hands or in the hands of users for testing. This is a really good place to start because then you don't have to think about infrastructure infrastructure or code quality. A lot of the stuff that was set up here, especially on the AI front, would have taken me double or triple the time, even if I was using something like Claude Code. It is really nice not having to think about the infrastructure or API keys or anything like that, which gives you a lot of mental space to properly think about the design and the feel of the app. If you're looking to rapidly prototype in a more realistic environment, this is a good option. The third group of people are companies who are looking to get their non-technical members of their team to start building their own applications for their business. This is a really good way to start because it's very difficult not impossible for a salesperson to pick up Claude code and start vibe coding an app to help them with sales. If you have something like this, they can build something quickly and more important, something that's actually usable with very little effort and literally no coding knowledge. So I think this is great for building internal tools, especially when you don't want to think about maintenance or infrastructure. This is a great place to start. So those are the three groups of people who I think would really benefit from using this platform. Okay, so let's go over the limits and when you would stop using this, especially as a beginner. The big limitations are if you have to build really complex features. For example, if you're doing some augmented reality stuff or you're doing very custom AI agents where you need fine-tuned control over the tool calling. If you're doing complex stuff, it's not impossible to do it on platforms like this because at the end of the day, there is underlying code under the hood that you can modify, but it'd probably be easier to do it with something like Claude Code. Another thing is if they're missing modules for something that you need, especially for third-party integrations that you wanna install. 
install. Let's say, for example, if you want to process payments, which they do actually support Stripe, which does work on the App Store because of Apple's latest ruling. Let's say that you wanted to use Revenue Cat for subscriptions instead. You can't just install Revenue Cat easily here. This is actually an example that I brought up with the team, and they actually did say that they're building the Revenue Cat module as I'm recording this video. But if you need certain modules and integrations that you know exist for React Native, but that the team has not integrated yet, that is another limitation to be aware of. So if you're a beginner, here is the roadmap that I recommend. Start with anything, build your first two to three apps on here, get really comfortable with AI prompting, understanding how mobile apps work, and then deploying something very real to test flight. This alone will put you ahead of 90% of the people who talk about shipping mobile apps. Step number two is once you're comfortable, try to build something more ambitious. Really push the limits of this platform, purposely try to hit the walls, and really understand what this platform can and can't do. This is very valuable learning. Step three is that if you hit those limits, you have options. You can actually export your code from anything and then transition to something like Cloud Code or Cursor if you need more control. But honestly, most builders might just stick with anything and realize that they can build almost anything they need right on this platform, especially if they keep adding new modules and capabilities. Something that might be a limitation today might be completely possible on here tomorrow. By the time you get to this point, if you really want to migrate off, you should have the knowledge to be able to do that. You can choose to do it based on your specific needs. And step four is to keep a tool like this in your toolkit, even if you do eventually learn how to work with code. Platforms like this are still very valuable for rapidly prototyping or building simple apps quickly. If you're someone that wants to get into mobile app development, but you've always felt like the barrier has been a bit too high, this is your chance. The barrier has never been lower and you can actually build a mobile application that is in users' hands over the weekend with zero coding knowledge. I'm not saying you could build the next Instagram, but you can build something very real and useful for people. And more importantly, you'll learn by doing. If you found this helpful, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about my experiences building productivity apps. And obviously, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. I'll leave a link to anything and that offer code in the description. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.